Hi everyone. In the previous videos, we've seen how to use Terrigen's easy cloud presets to create the complex layers of cloud cover in our shot. Using these presets and following a simple workflow of positioning a cloud layer, then shaping it, and finally optimizing it, allows us to build up a dynamic environment while keeping focus on the creative aspects of the shot. In this video, we'll wrap up the sky portion of the environment by taking a look at the atmosphere node and the lighting settings used in the shot. Our shot provided a challenge in regard to the atmosphere because a relationship had already been established in the previous scene between the altitude of the camera and the heights of the terrain, and this needed to be preserved. This can often be the case in a visual effects pipeline where you're not always in control of the 3D layout of a scene. We wanted our shot to feel like it's taking place at a much higher altitude than the 10,000 feet or 3,000 meters that it had been staged at. And by using Terrigen's atmosphere settings, we were able to compensate for the previous layout of the shot. By default, each Terrigen project has an atmosphere node at the top of the atmosphere node list. This node contains the global settings for controlling the planet's atmosphere, such as haze and sky color. Visually speaking, the higher the altitude, the more saturated and darker the sky color becomes, while the atmosphere becomes clearer. We made use of the haze exponential height setting under the height control tab to reduce the atmosphere density at high altitudes, while leaving the density unchanged at sea level. Alternatively, we might have reduced the haze density value under the main tab instead. However, this would have resulted in a global adjustment, affecting the density at sea level as well. Next, we darken the sky by reducing the blue sky density value. It's important to note that had we not been constrained by the 3D layout of our shot, we could have moved the terrain and camera even higher in elevation to obtain the same naturalism without changing the atmosphere settings. The previous layout of our shot lent itself very well to the default lighting strategy used in Terrigen. And although we tried several lighting scenarios to best accentuate the aircraft and terrain, we kept coming back to the basic default settings to showcase the shot. Click on the lighting button on the top toolbar to bring up the lighting node list. By default, this list contains two nodes, the EnviroLight node, which controls the indirect lighting of the project through global illumination or ambient occlusion techniques, and the Sunlight node, which controls the direct lighting of the project through intensity, direction, and elevation of the sun. In order to eliminate any harsh shadow edges that might show up on the terrain, we enabled the Do Soft Shadows checkbox for the shot. And because we are using the Defer All Shading method to render the project, which takes advantage of the number of anti-aliasing passes and settings, we were able to reduce the Soft Shadow Samples value to 1, which will help to reduce render times. These few changes made to the default lighting and atmosphere settings reflect Terrigen's strength in creating the look of naturalistic environments. To highlight this even further, we're including this time-lapse sequence of the exact same environment for you to see how the existing cloud layers and atmosphere settings react to the passage of sunlight during the day. We hope you enjoyed these step-by-step -step videos on creating a dynamic sky environment. With the following videos in this series, we'll begin to explore how to set up forest populations and texture the terrain. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching.